As you might know, we have a tool called Data Mover to migrate PeopleSoft application as well as configuration data from one PeopleSoft environment to another PeopleSoft environment. Then why did PeopleSoft came up with a new tool called Data Migration Workbench back with PeopleToolsay.54? What is the difference between Data Mover and Data Migration Workbench? We are going to explore these differences together in the next couple of episodes. Hello everybody, my name is Siva Koya and I will walk you through those differences. Without any delay, let's dive in. The very first difference between Data Mover and Data Migration Workbench is accessibility. Data Mover exists as a backend tool Usually, PeopleSoft administrators only have access to execute data mover scripts. On the other hand, Data Migration Workbench exists as a front-end tool integrated with PIA where we can grant access to functional users if decide to migrate PeopleSoft configuration or application data from one PeopleSoft environment to another PeopleSoft environment. Now, let's see what access is required and how to access these tools. I'll start with Data Mover. I logged into PeopleSoft application and accessed the user profile of user ID called Al. Now I will navigate to role section. As you can see, this user has bare minimum access, just a PeopleSoft user. Just for your information, PeopleSoft user does not have access to Data Mover tool. To save us some time, I have created this role data mover ahead of time. Let's see what access I provided through this role. To show you that, I'll click on view definition. I have assigned a permission list called data mover. I will click on view definition. I will navigate to people tools tab. All I did was check this data mover access checkbox to grant access to the data mover tool for all the users associated with this permission list. Now let's see how Al can access Data Mover tool itself. The very first step our user Al needs to do is install People Tools on his computer. Once he installs People Tools, he will see a People Tools folder as you can see mine. I will open my Tools folder, bin client win86. I will search for psdmt. This is our Data Mover application file. I will double click on it. I will log in as Al with PeopleSoft credentials. Here we go. This is our data mode tool and this is how to access it. As you saw, this was not a straightforward process. Now let's see how to access our data migration workbench tool. This time I opened user profile of Annie having only PeopleSoft user role. PeopleSoft user role doesn't grant access to data migration workbench. In order to grant access to Data Migration Workbench for Annie, I will add a delivered role called ADS Designer. I will save it. That's all we need to do. Now I will log in as Annie to access Data Migration Workbench tool. In order to access Data Migration Workbench tool, I will navigate to People Tools, Lifecycle Tools, Migrate Data, Data Migration Workbench. Here we go. This is our data migration workbench page. From this page, we can add a new project or load an existing project. This is how easy it is to access data migration workbench. I'm going to show you now how to migrate application data both using data mover as well as data migration workbench so that you can visually see what are those additional features added to data migration workbench. Let me give you some background related to this exercise. This is a simple custom application page I created for this demo. Let's add some data. As you can see, business unit is validated against a prompt table. I will add requisition ID. Requisition date is a required field. Let me input some date. Here we have translate table edit. We also have a SNO table edit. People tools does a bunch of validations before I can save the data. This is the table behind our application page. Purposefully, I'm inserting some junk data into this table 
bypassing all those people soft validations now i will commit the data let's assume this data was inserted by some third party application without going through proper people soft validations we will see what happens if this row of data is migrated from one people soft environment to another using data mover the way how it works in data mover is first we need to export that specific row of data into a file from the source environment and then we will import that file again using data mover of target environment right now i am logging in as all because all has access to data mover in source environment i'll click ok let me paste the script lines to export our raw of data we just need three statements to export our raw of data in the first statement i provided the location of the log file if there are any errors those errors will be logged in this log file in the second statement i provided the location of the output file our raw of data will be saved in dat format and this is the location of that file in the final statement i have provided the table name from which we need to export our raw of data as well as the condition that we need to use to export our raw of data that's pretty much it let me go ahead and run the script as you can see here our one row of data was successfully exported now let's go ahead and import our raw of data in our target environment i will log in as al i assume al has the same access in our target environment let me go ahead and log in i'm able to successfully log in let me paste the script lines this time our data will be loaded from my file hence i use the keyword input since we are importing the data into a table we need to use import keyword here that's pretty much it let me go ahead and run the script as you can see one row of data was successfully loaded without any errors if you are following me what is the lesson here in case of data mover garbage in garbage out there is no way we can enforce people's of validations when we export or import data using data mover now i'll show you how to perform the same task using data migration workbench and how it is different since annie has access to data migration workbench i'm logging in as annie let me navigate to data migration workbench people tools life cycle tools migrate data the very first step is we need to create data set i will click on application data set designer let me add a new data set i will click on add button here we can add all the records from which we need to export the data in hierarchical fashion in our case we just have one record let's go ahead and add it i will go ahead and save it i need to ensure our data set is copyable i will select this flag i will save the page that's it our data set is ready let's go ahead and create a project to export our raw data in order to do that i will navigate to data migration workbench i will add a new project let's give a name to our project i will click on add button let's search for data set that we created earlier as you can see here our user annie does not have access to export the data from our table what i did was i created a brand new query security tree and added our custom record to this tree in order for any to get access to our query security tree what i did was i picked one of the permission lists of any i navigated to data migration tab access group permissions here i have provided the query security tree that i created as well as the access group here i will give both read and write security i will click okay and save our changes after adding the missing security i went back to our previous page i will click okay now i will try to search for our data set now i am able to access it here i can select which specific row of data i want to export based on record case here i want to select the row of data having invalid business unit dm01 this is the row of data i want to export i will select it and click on insert and return i will click on okay button then on return and save our changes as you can see our project was successfully created now we are ready to export our data to a file by using this copy to file option once that file is created it will be used as a data source in our target environment even before copying to a file we can check if the data passes all people soft validations let's go ahead and check that 
the validations are done by a batch program let's go ahead and run it as you can see here project state is updated to checking integrity after a few seconds i refresh the status as you can see the row of data that we plan to export failed people tools validations now i will click on messages hyperlink to see specific error messages once we identify we are exporting this row of data i will click on red cross mark again as we know these are all expected errors because these validations got filed based on our record field properties let me go back again i will return remember that we are still in our source environment let's assume our user Annie forgot to perform validation before exporting the data to a file. In order to copy our data to a file, I will click on copy to file. Here we need to provide at which location we need to save the file. This is a logical definition. In my source environment, I have configured the location name to this specific path on my app server. Let me open my app server. So this is the path I configured. Inside my path, I have a folder called DMW where I plan to save my project. Area name is nothing but folder inside our path. As I said, I will select DMW. Meaning, I expect my project file to be saved here after I run the program. Now, I am ready to kick off the process. I will go ahead and run the process. As you can see here, now our project state is scheduled for copy to file. After a few seconds, I can click on refresh button. As you can see here, our copy to file succeeded. Let's open my app server. Let me refresh. As you can see, our data is sitting in this project file now. Let's assume our target environment have direct access to this path. Let me show you how to load our project in our target environment. Let's assume Annie has the same access in our target environment. Now I will log in as Annie into our target environment. Next, I will navigate to Data Migration Workbench page. In our previous step, we exported data from our source environment to a file. Let's go ahead and import that data into our target environment now. To load our project file, I will click on Load Project from File hyperlink. Here, we need to provide the location name where our project file is located. Even though location name is little different in target environment, the underlying path is the same. Our subfolder name is DMW. Let's select it. As you can see, rest of the projects are loaded, but one specific project is not loaded. As you can see, this is our project and it is not yet loaded in our target environment. I'm going to select our project and click load. Let's see the message. It looks like our user Annie does not have permission to perform validation. Let's do some security changes to fix this error in our target environment. To fix this error, I opened a permission list that Annie got, clicked on Data Migration tab, then Copy Compare Report Permission. I gave full access for copying and comparing dataset as well as changing Copy Compare Attributes. I will click OK and save our changes. Now let's go back and click OK and try to reload our project. One more error message. Oh no, let's see what, what does it say. It says the data set definition is not available on our target database. I think I know what it is talking about. I logged into our source environment. Remember when we plan to export our raw of data, we created a new data set in our source environment and added the table from which we need to export the data. What that message is saying is this specific data set is missing in target environment. We can migrate dataset using App Designer. In order to migrate our dataset, I logged into Source Environment App Designer. Insert definitions into project, dataset definitions. This is our dataset. I double clicked on it and I will save our project. And I will migrate our project to our target environment. Now let's try to reload the project again. Hopefully this time it goes through. No errors. First thing we notice is we have more options in our target environment when compared to our source environment. Let's try validate option this time. We will go ahead and kick off validation process. Project state is updated to schedule for file validate. After a few seconds, I clicked on the refresh button. 
and validate from file succeeded and as expected we received some messages i will click on the hyperlink and i will click on the messages we have some people tools record field validation error messages i will go back return and this time i will check for integrity this is the option that we already tried in our source environment i will click refresh and we have one message this is our data integrity validation report we saw the same messages in our source environment if you would have noticed we have more error messages in data integrity report and it performed broader validations when compared to the validate option in case of validate option as you can see here validate option only performed as no table edit translate table edit but did not cover prompt table edit and the message severity is warning in this case something to keep in mind that's it guys in this episode we covered copy to file option validate check integrity in the next episode we are going to cover compare submit for copy and how we can enable workflow before even migrating the data into our target environment quick recap of what we learned so far in this episode let's start with data mover data mover is easy to use but requires people tools installation data mover is less secure because once you got access to data mover you, you can do pretty much anything deleting data dropping tables what not on the other hand data migration workbench is integrated with paa no external installation is required functional users can use it to export and import application as well as configuration data data migration workbench is well controlled through security we can only migrate specific set of data that we have access to we can perform validation as well as check integrity before exporting our data to a file we can do the same before importing the data into the target environment there you have it guys now you know the differences between data mover and data migration workbench in our next episode we will dive more into comparing data sets before importing the data into target environment we will also see in which area of data migration workbench oracle is adding more and more capabilities and finally we will see how to enable workflow when user submits a request to import data into target environment stay tuned guys thank you so much for watching till the end see you soon on my next episode please leave a like if the content was helpful for you it really helps our channel consider subscribing if you want more of this content bye bye have a great day